This is the GIS News Hour for Thursday, 2nd June. I am Leslie Ann Johnson. In the headlines, Grenada moves to strengthen ability to access opportunities provided by the EPA. National Security Minister confident all is in place in the event of a disaster. And the role of regional cabinet secretaries examined during a regional meeting in Grenada. Those were the headlines. Details are next. The launch of Spice Mask 2011, Saturday, June 4th at the National Stadium. Showcasing all aspects of Spice Mask. Traditional and fancy masks. Top Soka, Fufu, and Calypso Artists. And the 2011 Carnival Queens make their first appearance. All this for free. Bring out the kids and make it a family fun day. Join the Carnival Kickoff Parade from Melville Street to the Athletic Stadium. The launch of Spice Mask, Saturday, June 4th from 3 p.m. For more info, log on www.spicemaskgrenada.com. Do you really want to see? Save on the cost of posting? Grenada Postal Corporation is the answer. We offer convenience, online tracking, reliability, on time delivery, and of course, unbeatable prices on express parcels and registered mailing. Ask about your online visa application and notification by email service. Grenada Postal Corporation, a member of the UPU, the world's oldest network. Send, receive, delivered. Welcome back, viewers. Grenada is on a drive to strengthen its ability to access the market opportunities that the Economic Partnership Agreement provides. The EPA is a trade and development agreement signed between the European Community and CARI Forum. Most important to the region under this agreement are areas of trade in services and investment because of a lack of comparative advantage in terms of the exportation of goods. National EPA Implementation Coordinator Mr. Desmond John says there is much work to be done so that we can benefit from free access to the European market. We have to identify very clearly, okay, what are the areas we are going to concentrate our manufacturing on? We have to make a decision on that. No, the areas we should concentrate our manufacturing on are those areas where we have some kind of advantage. For example, in the area of nutmeg, in the nutmeg industry, th there's great opportunities there. Yeah? Because as you know, nutmeg is used in the food industry, in the perfume industry, in the pharmaceutical industry. But let us look at this. What investments are being made in those areas? Now, they can be new and emerging areas, but we will need perhaps to, 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 to undertake joint ventures, all right, with, with, with other companies and partners outside of Grenada, all right, to come in and invest and develop those industries. Now, if we do that, if we are successful at that, then we can be able to access the markets and take advantage of the opportunities that's before us. Mr. John says they have already begun dialogue with key players in the private sector and government in this regard. Discussions have already been held with the Chamber of Commerce, Employers Federation, Bureau of Standards and the Board and Ministry of Tourism. He says there is a need to change the mindset of people. What we are proposing with, with, with the, 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 um, the organizations that we have spoken to is that when we do our theme specific interventions because we are going to be doing specific interventions with them on the area of market access for example and we are we are we are emphasizing market access because those are the opportunities for the private sector all right that's why we are having so much emphasis on that so when we do the very specific theme interventions like market access we are going to bring into that conversation 
those agencies and government departments that will provide the support services to facilitate market access. So for example, we have to make sure that we have certification that the, the, the sanitary and phytosanitary measures are, you know, are, are, are in place, the packaging and all these things are there. And so we will work with the Bureau of Standards. We'll work with the Ministry of Agriculture, right, in the case of goods. Mm -hmm. We'll work with the Ministry of Tourism and key the Grenada Coalition of Service Providers, which is an organization we are going to work with to build in the case of trading services. So we, we expect to have a very close working relationship with those organizations in the specific areas so that they can use their influence on the membership to cause the membership to have that change of attitude. It's no longer business as usual. In fact, we, we, we will sing the song that business unusual. Because business as usual is zero. <laughs> business unusual gives us opportunity. Prime Minister, the Honorable Tillman Thomas is confident that all is in place to efficiently respond in the event of a disaster during the Atlantic hurricane season. His optimism comes following a meeting of the National Emergency Advisory Council, which he chairs. All committee members must report on the work of their team during the past few months, leading up to the 2011 Atlantic hurricane season, which began on Wednesday. I think NADMA is prepared. I think NADMA has been doing a fairly good job. Uh, we cannot stop a, a disaster, but at least we're in a position to inform and to uh, educate and to, uh, to mitigate. And this is what I think we, we, we are doing. Officer responsible for shelters on the committee, Raymond Toussaint, says generally all shelters have been checked and approved. This year, the St. Louis Girls RC School has been scratched off the list of approved shelters because of some earth movement at the structure. In St. Louis RC Girls, because there are earth movements there, and it's no, we thought that it's not safe for the to shelter people there, so we had to remove this building. I know we have 33 shelters, approved shelters in St. George's. Uh, we have 26 in St. Andrews, 12 uh, in St. Patrick's, uh, about 10 to 9 in St. John's, 4 in St. Max, 7 in Caracol, 2 in Pity Matnik, and 9 in St. David's. Head of NADMA, Benedict Peters, says though things are generally in place, there are some committees that are not yet quite up to par. The meeting today brought together all committee members and we gave reports on the activities that they had. It gives an indication as to how prepared they are, what the amount of work that needs to be done, how much work that NADMA as the Secretary need to do to make sure that the committees are up to speed as possible. And then the agency gave a report. So it was an evening where you had reports from the different national committees, chairpersons, on the activities of the committee. There is some work to do with some of the committees. There are a few committees that are better ready than others. There are, but there are work to do on some of the committees. There are some committees that, that are beginning so there's a lot of work to do on the communities at that point. 16 named storms are expected this hurricane season. Of that number, nine are predicted to develop into hurricanes, five of which may become major hurricanes. Regional cabinet secretaries and heads of their public service have been reminded of their responsibility in executing good leadership for advanced development. This was highlighted during the opening ceremony of the fifth annual Caribbean Regional Cabinet Secretaries and Heads of Public Service Consultative Meeting at the Grenadian Birex Resort. Grenada's Prime Minister and Minister Responsible for Public Administration, the Honorable Tillman Thomas, told the delegates that their role in the service is critical to their country's economic development. Details in this report.
The 5th Annual Caribbean Regional Cabinet Secretaries and Heads of Public Service Consultative Meeting will focus on the issue of leadership and development. Participants from across the Caribbean will discuss three main pillars of leadership, administrative, ethical, and political. It's being held at the Grenadian by Rex Resort. The two-day event is meant to engage the senior public servants in discussions that will explore the political and administrative possibilities of improving the sector. It's it's also an opportunity for the Commonwealth Secretariat to share experiences and good practices with the public officers. During a ceremony marking the opening of the consultation, Prime Minister Tillman Thomas told the participants that governments depend on their skills and talents to ensure plans and programs are executed successfully. This, Mr. Thomas says, requires good leadership practices. So, ladies and gentlemen, leadership development in the public sector is quite relevant and germane. All our societies are now characterized with a more discerning, demanding, and assertive populace, aided by a plethora of media outlets and programs such as talk shows, their needs, aspirations, views, and demands are loud. The expectations are increasing and conveyed forcefully, and they are aware of the franchise which they are prepared to exercise. To ignore this reality as leaders is to do so at our own peril. What is quite clear is that there is a perceived and sometimes real gap between our public's expectations and the level of service delivery and efficiency of our public service. So as leaders, it is our responsibility not only to respond appropriately, but to plan and manage the change processes that will anticipate and minimize future gaps. However, this is a complex process as it will involve organizational, structural, and cultural changes. Advisor to the Commonwealth's Governance and Institutional Development Division, Dr. Joan Wasiki, says leadership has become a major concern in the world over the last few years, and the public service must be able to keep abreast. Good governance, economic development, growth, and poverty reduction are all hinged on good leadership at all levels. And public sector leaders are encouraged to think ahead, think across, think again, administratively, ethically, and politically when making decisions. The program for today features presentations and discussions on three dimensions of leadership administrative leadership, ethical leadership, and political leadership. Chair of the Public Service Commission, Mrs. Gloria Payne Banfield, says the workshop is timely as the Grenada Service continues its process of public sector modernization and reform. Leadership skills are necessary for the implementation process, and those senior public officers are supposed to lead the process. Further to this, Leadership development is necessary throughout the public service at all levels, especially at the lower rungs where team building is essential to the implementation process. These consultations among cabinet secretaries and heads of public service commissions tend to be supportive of the reform measures and efforts to change public services throughout the region. I trust that the discussions would assist in accelerating the desired changes and the furtherance of the tenets of good governance. For the GIS NewsHour, I am Abigail McIntyre reporting. Education Minister Senator Franco Bernadine has thrown out a challenge to Anglican teachers to be the catalyst for behavioral change among students. Addressing teachers at their annual convention at the St. John's Anglican Church on Thursday, Senator Bernadine said real success will come from trained and motivated teachers with good classroom practices. According to her, producing successful and well-rounded individuals require more than just extensive hours in the classroom. The education minister also appealed to the teachers to keep up with technological advancements so that they can remain relevant in today's world. Literacy is now defined not in terms of math and English only, but indeed in terms of being computer savvy. 
One must be fluent and familiar with programs that are in demand by businesses and firms competing with each other in order to get the jobs. And so, teachers, the time has come for us to grasp the opportunity being afforded us to make that change that is so vitally important in our education system. It is first a change in vision as to start here. Now is the time to make that happen. It's like a relay. Each team must carry us so far, the baton must be passed, and the next team must take us forward. The teachers remain the constant factor in the system. Change is a fact of life, and we must embrace it. The education system must constantly change to keep up with the times. We must look for new and innovative ways to help our people. The meeting was held to discuss how teachers can deliver a better product to students. And according to Senator Bernadine, there is need to make the education system more suitable to the job market by reinforcing technical skills, introducing personal development skills, and universal education according to the Education for All International Policy. This means upgrading the common entrance to a competency-based exam, which will indicate the levels of competency of each student and therefore what to expect as they move from primary to secondary. The change means moving from learning by rote and chalk and talk to a problem-solving approach. Your classroom must become a student-focused environment rather than a teacher-focused environment. And you must facilitate their learning experience. It means teachers must be versed in all these skills and must have a much greater depth of knowledge of their subject area through degree qualifications if necessary in their areas of competence so that they can answer the questions posed by today's students. Discipline issues are no longer yesterday's but related to cyberspace in a lot of cases, internet and pornography and helping them to control themselves and to develop boundaries within the newfound freedoms that Facebook and Twitter have to offer. We need a rapid paradigm shift. We must move with the times. We must always be a step ahead of them. The one-day conference was guided by the team GATA, empowering teachers to successfully interact with present and future generations. Senator Bernadine says since last year's meeting, significant progress has been made. This includes the reintroduction of technical education to primary schools, a policy decision that ensures that every secondary school offers at least the three technical subjects, and the introduction of a personal development skills course for students from grade one to form five. This ensures that every child is taught anger management, conflict resolution, and self-esteem building. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back. Rooted in our rich ancestral traditions. Feel, feel the energy at Spice Mass 2011, Grenada, July 22nd to August 9th. Home of 100,000 Jab Jabs. The Caribbean's biggest summer festival and the safest carnival on earth. Spice Mass 2K11. It's all about Juve, traditional mass, pan, soca, the best street party in the world. Monday night mass, Spice Mass, Grenada, July 22nd to August 9th. Home of 11. 100,000 Jab Jabs. Log on now to www.spicemassgrenada.com for more info. Lazy Bone, Lazy Bone, wake up! It's time for a PA timeout! CFNI and GFNC say take a timeout for physical activity. On the 1st of June, it's Caribbean Nutrition Day. Jump, skip, hop.
Hop, jog, swim, dance, play netball, cricket, football, volleyball, catch, walk, weed, sweep, at home, at school, and play wherever you are. Take a PA timeout. Do whatever activity you like. Take a timeout whenever you can. Take a timeout however you are able. Take a timeout. Just get moving. Take a PA timeout. Continuing the news, regional airline Liat has reiterated that the closure of city ticketing offices reflects the prevailing trend by airlines throughout the world, including the Caribbean, towards a shift in distribution and sales to telephone, travel agents, and internet-based channels. In a statement issued on Thursday, the airline said the shift to these channels represents a part of the efforts by airlines to reduce their recurrent and operating costs in order to maintain competitiveness in a very competitive airline business. It adds that the closure of the CTOs at this time is a reflection of the need for immediate cost-cutting in the face of a continuing difficult regional and international economic situation, which has seen significant fallouts in airline revenues at a time of escalating costs. The airline says every effort is being made to work with its union partners to facilitate the smoothest possible transition for employees at the LIAT CTOs during this period. This includes implementation of a company-wide voluntary separation and early retirement program targeted at employees at all levels of the company as part of the overall employee rebalancing process. The airline's statement concluded by saying that as has been the case with a number of other companies, both regionally and at the national level, recent actions by LIAT's management have been dictated by the need for decisive and timely implementation of measures to contain costs in the face of a continuing decline in economic activity within the region. It says the company remains committed as far as possible to dialogue and cooperate with its employee representatives during this difficult period. More scholarship opportunities are being made available for people in Grenada as part of the government's thrust to further develop the country's human resource. We get details from Tuana Sam. The Grenada government has announced that scholarships are available for Grenadians to study at various overseas training institutions. Opportunities are currently available for young professionals and aspiring professionals to study in Germany, Serbia, Cuba and India. Postgraduates education and training are being offered in Germany in a number of fields including engineering, veterinary and medicine and media studies. Successful applicants of the scholarships, which are sponsored by the government of the Federal Republic of Germany, will commence studies in 2012. There is also a chance to study in India beginning in February 2012, the Indian Government Scholarship for a Master's Degree in Human Resource Planning and Development is tenable at the country's institution of applied manpower research. Meanwhile, officials at the scholarship desk in the Ministry of Education are appealing to Grenadians to make use of the scholarships that are now open and can be taken up at any institution of higher learning regionally and internationally. For example, there are scholarships to study in Cuba for qualified applicants wishing to earn medical degrees. In the European nation of Serbia, opportunities are available for undergraduates, postgraduates, and research studies. Scholarships to young women in the field of life sciences are also available under the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, ELS O'Reilly International Fellowships. According to the official of the UN agency, successful candidates will conduct research at a doctoral and postdoctoral level in one or more fields of life science, including biology, agriculture and medicine. Additional information on these and other opportunities can be accessed through the Human Resource Development Division and the Scholarship Desk at the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development by calling 440-2737 or emailing scholarshipdesk at gmail.com. That report from Tawana Sam. A pan jamboree on the Caranash on Friday will signal the return of steel band in its fullest form to spice mass. That's according to a news release from the Grenada Carnival Committee. It states that the TCL Skiffel Bunch Steel Orchestra from Trinidad and Tobago will match its skills against Grenada's finest players in the steel band jamboree on Friday. The release also adds that in 2011, pan lovers can expect the bomb tune competition and panya judging, which were introduced in 2009, and the traditional panorama 
Panorama on Fantastic Saturday. It says the Sweet Songs of Steel Band begins in its 2011 campaign on Friday with a pre-carnival launch Steel Band Jamboree where Grenada's finest comes up against the TCL Skittlebunch Steel Orchestra from 6 p.m. on the Carnage. The carnival season begins with the official launch of Spice Man on Saturday, June 4 at the National Stadium. The Grenada Electricity Services Grenneck is continuing efforts to assist in the promotion and awareness of local art. Grenneck has set up an art gallery at its new Dusty Highway location in Grand Dance. The hope is that such an initiative will secure a permanent gallery to exhibit a collection of Grenadian art to all customers and partners. This forms part of the company's Lantern Art Exposition program, which was launched last month. Grenneck adds its voice to what we hope will become a powerful movement to have a space created for the expression of all of this wonderful talent that resides in Grenada and which certainly promotes all of what we're about, our life and our culture, and that it's important for us to preserve that. And we think that a space that allows that kind of expression will certainly go a long way towards that. That's Grenlex Corporate Communications Officer, Ms. Prudence Greenwich. She says the company will host a number of art exhibitions throughout the year. This will be done in collaboration with the Grenada Arts Council. One of the featured artists at the gallery, Freddie Paul, says he's grateful for the opportunity to have his work displayed in Grenlex Gallery. Well, I felt good, you know, because and not just the opportunity, but I felt good because over the years I've been doing um, the art and then you have a company opening there. The, for the first day and that, on that tone I, I, I thought it was, you know, I felt good. The Alston George playing field will be lit for the third time since its inaugural lighting on April 19. Grenadian businessman Heron Lewis, who owns and runs H. Lewis Construction Company in Trinidad, will be making a special presentation to Hurricane Football Club. Mr. Lewis, who is originally from St. Mark, will present the team with sporting equipment as part of his $25,000 pledged sponsorship. The initiative has been strongly facilitated by the efforts of Senator Dennis Modest. Senator Modest, who applauds Lewis for his generous donation, says it's not the first time the businessman has given back to his parish. Lewis will make his presentation to the team during a handing over ceremony at the Austin George Park on Friday, beginning at 6 p.m. The ceremony will be followed by a friendly fall match between the Hurricanes Junior and Senior teams. In regional developments, the Red Cross has reopened a cholera treatment center near port au prince Haiti to fight a resurgence of the disease that killed thousands last year. According to Haitian health authorities, at least 10 people died in recent days of a new cholera spike in areas near the Haitian capital. About 1,000 cholera cases were admitted to the Carrefour Hospital. The Red Cross Center was originally established last year at the height of the epidemic and there are further stocks of medical equipment ready to be released. Reports of cholera in Haiti's urban areas had been trailing off since the beginning of the year, even if isolated cases were reported in rural areas. In the late 2000 epidemic, 5,332 people were killed and 310,000 were diagnosed with cholera. At the height of the outbreak, dozens of deaths were reported daily. That's news. Sports is up next. Sunday, June 12th, will be a musical explosion at the Grenada National Stadium. Nine of the top steel orchestras in Grenada will compete in the bomb tune competition. The instruments of steel will ring out melodic tunes of sweet Grenadian soca. The musical action kicks off at 5 p.m. sharp. Admission adults $5 and children under 12 free. Bring the entire family and be part of the build-up to Spice Mass 2K11. Cricket, the past, present, and future is being discussed during the town hall meeting Tuesday, June 9th at the GBSS Auditorium in Tantin. Distinguished commentator Reds Pereira is the guest speaker in the debate starting 5.30 in the afternoon. Controversy between players and the board, the decline of the game in the region, 
the impact of the IPL and world cricket and more will be dissected in an attempt to restore integrity and pride in the region. So fans, come out in your numbers and be part of the Big Cricket Debate Tuesday, June 9th at the GBSS Auditorium in Tantine, starting 5.30 in the afternoon. An exciting showdown is expected when Granville Secondary School, GSS, and the St. Andrews American Secondary School, SAS, clash in the final of the United Insurance Secondary Schools Cricket Ch Tournament on, uh, that's taking place on Friday. Orwanga Ashley Nurse says that the 2020 game against India on Saturday in Port of Spain is the biggest of his career. Local boy Andrew Fletcher also eyeing a big performance in that game on Saturday. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites, and this is another GI Sports. Uh, Bangda Asti Nurse says that he's ready to face India in the Digital 2020 International on Saturday in Port of Spain, Trinidad. The 22-year-old Barbadian player, who made his debut in the recent series against Pakistan in April, is in the 12-man squad for the encounter. Nurse says that at the moment he got the call, he was switched on for the game, which is seen as the biggest match of his career. After playing against Pakistan, Nurse wants to make a big impression against India in an attempt to set his international career alight. Nurse was steady in his debut without being spectacular and has since returned to the drawing board, sharpening his skills. The Barbadian all-rounder made a big jump up the ranks. A year ago, he was not even in the Barbados um, thinking, but brilliant bowling in the regional 2020 competition has seen him break into the West Indies lineup. Uh, well, another player hoping to come big in the game is local boy Andre Fletcher. He told the GIS that he's eyeing an impressive showing in front and behind the stumps. Uh, Fletcher says that he's aiming to be efficient wicket keeping, capitalizing on the opportunities offered to him and produce an impressive display, batting display. The talented stroke player who plays majestically down the ground is signed at least a half century in that game. We certainly wish him and the West Indies team the very best in that encounter on Saturday. Fletcher is in pretty good nick after leading the Grenada to the Win Lotto Winner Islands uh, 2020 competition in Dominica, where he scored two scorching half centuries. Well, both the West Indies and Indian cricket teams train today in preparation for the 2020 International on Saturday at the Queen's Park Oval. The West Indies 12-man squad were at Cova this morning from 10 o'clock for a long session, while the Indians were at the Queen's Park Oval from 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The teams will switch venue on Friday as they finalize their arrangements for the game starting 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Here at home, an exciting showdown in the making when St. Andrews Giants, uh, St. Andrews American Secondary School, SAS, and Grenville Secondary School, GSS, clash in the final of the United Insurance Secondary School Cricket Tournament. Uh, organizers say that the encounter from 10 o'clock in the morning should produce keen and exciting cricket. That's on Friday. Tournament coordinator Rafa Coney says that the result is a hard one to call. I expect it can go, it, it can go anyway. As I said, um, both teams both of, 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 of good bowling attack. And therefore, um, the two players in my mind, uh, St. Le and, and, and Rudy Paul, as you know, who is a national player, um, they will be critical in terms of how the team doing batting. So I, I, I certainly um, wouldn't want to make a call. I think it can go anyway. And I, I expect that the, the final will be a, a pretty close one. Crony says that the teams deserve to be in the playoff. We cannot take anything away from both schools. I think they, they have played consistently well. Um, SAS uh, seem to know how to win. Um, they have done so uh, in that they have played undefeated. Likewise, Granville Secondary. Um, they had some kind of close game, but I think they came out, came out well. And deservedly, I think both teams you know, deserve it to be both. in the final. The former Grenada opening batsman says that the 2011 competition had been rather impressive with some talent being on earth. Some of the games have been very, very competitive. 
and there have been outstanding performances, uh, particularly in some of the bowling instances. Um, this year's tournament uh, did produce a few centuries, not as much as last year. But all, all in all, I, I thought it was a, a pretty good tournament. We, again, we have seen talent. We have seen, you know, um, persons that, that can go on. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm pretty happy about the tournament. Cricket official Rafael Crony. Another eight matches were played out this weekend in this team, the Dave Bird's 2020 cricket competition. Munich Invaders and Ukraine, Ukraine clashed at Lassages playing field from 10 o'clock in the morning, while Wester Hall's Post Club and St. David's Carlick Secondary School SDCSS collide in Bellevue. Another two matches are scheduled from 2 o'clock in the afternoon when combined forces tackle New Rimmel Setters at Bellevue and Latouche Interior Grand Bacolette meet Rukane at La Sages. Another four games take place on Sunday. Combined forces and Pedmota meet at Bellevue from 10 o'clock in the morning, while Snow Corner and Westerhall Secondary clash at La Sages. Later on that day, Riverbank and Slam and Slum square off at La Sages from 2 o'clock in the afternoon, while Latan Sports and the St. Paul Sports clash at Bellevue. Meantime, there were wins uh, for Munich Invaders, St. Paul Sports Club, Westerhall Sports Club, Rukane, Latouche Interior, Grand Bracolette, and combined forces in the opening round of matches played last weekend in the competition. That's the St. David's 2020 event. Munich Invaders overwhelmed Latan Sports by 176 runs. That was the biggest win of the weekend. They scored 251 and dismissed the opposition for just 75. St. Paul's Sports Club were also very convincing in their 10 wicket win over Riverbank. They dismissed Riverbank for a mere 35 and they scored the runs without the loss of any wickets. Westerhall Sports Club were made to work a bit for their 51 run success over Rukane. Scores of uh, 40 by Troy George and 30 by Eamon Francis led Wester Hall to 175 for 6 in their innings. Rukin responded with 124. St. David's Catholic Secondary School SDCSS, meanwhile, crushed a Slam by 8 wickets. Slam was dismissed for 97 and St. David's SDCSS replied with 98 for 2. Rukin also tasted success, defeating Wester Hall Secondary School by 56 runs. Rukin scored 131 and dismissed the opposition for, 100, uh, for just 75. Latouche Interior Grand Bacolet defeated Pedmota in a close contest by four runs. They scored 107 and dismissed the opposition for 103. Very close there indeed. And combined forces defeated Snow Corner by five wickets. Snow Corner scored 129 and combined forces replied with 131 for five with one over to spare. Bartholomew took four wickets and Trevor Thwaites two, bowling for combined forces, while Enos MacDonald hit a hard hitting 56 and uh, Ram Kalawan, a classy unbeaten 45 for combined forces in the run chase. So combined forces getting off to an encouraging start. In football, the national soccer team will be in action this evening as it finalizes arrangements for the Gold Cup starting on June the 5th in the United States. The team is in Miami after arising, arriving on Tuesday from Panama where they suffered a 2-0 defeat last weekend in another warm-up fixture. The team trained diligently yesterday in Miami and will be in action this evening playing a university team in another warm-up fixture. Reports indicate that the team's spirits are high and that the squad is eager to make an impression in the competition that's called the Gold Cup starting on the 5th. Grenada meets Jamaica in the opening game of the competition, its opening game of the competition on the 6th, and there is a strong feeling in the camp that the Spice Boys will make it into the second round of the event. That will be fantastic. We wish them the very best. That's sports. I'm Trevor Thwaites. Shop online at your favorite stores around the world and your package will be delivered to your doorstep right here in Grenada. The Grenada Postal Corporation brings you closer to the rest of the world with GPC Global. 
GPC Global is a new, exciting, and cost-effective service. For less than $20 US, you can have your own personal mailbox in the US and off you go shopping. You can view your shipment as it moves 24-7 with up-to-the-minute tracking. Make your purchase and GPC Global will do the rest, even customs clearance. We make it easy and hassle-free. GPC Global, the world at your fingertips. Dependable, reliable, and safe. It's the Eucharistic Passover for men as we seek to help men play their leadership roles in their homes, church, and communities. Theme, Yahweh call it the man. Adam, where are you? It's a call for men to take stock of their respective lives. This year, the men journey to the St. Rose Modern Secondary School, June 18 and 19. Guest speaker, Father Roy Lee from the USA. There'll be music, song, and dance by our young men. Registration fee, $50 and covers lunch for both days. So get involved. Inspire your youth or men's group in your parish to participate in the Eucharistic Passover for Men at the St. Rose Modern Secondary School, Saturday, June 18th and Sunday, June 19th from 9 a.m. Thank you, Trevor. Recapping the main points, Grenada moves to strengthen its ability to access opportunities provided by the European Partnership Agreement. National Security Minister confident that systems are in place in the event of a disaster and the role of cabinet secretaries examined during a regional meeting in Grenada. That meeting was held at the Grenadian Birex Resort. That is the GIS News Hour. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson. On behalf of all those who made it possible, we thank you for viewing. You're watching the Government Information Service, channels 12 and 22.